Learning how to use the individual tools in Lightroom or Photoshop is one thing, but then it's a completely different thing to learn how to use them all together, which is why I wanna walk you through my entire workflow using Lightroom and Photoshop together to edit a portrait and then a waterfall image. So then that way you can hopefully get some ideas for your workflow to improve your editing or just get more creative with your images. So let's start things off with the portrait photo. Here in Lightroom Classic, I'm in the develop module. And the first thing that I always do is the basic exposure corrections. Since the general brightness of the photo is fine, that means I'm gonna focus on the highlight shadows, whites and blacks here. I'll start off with the highlights and the white since the light on my subject's skin is a little too bright right now. So I'm gonna bring that down. It'll reveal more details in the sky and also darken his skin a bit. Then I'll go to my whites and just decrease that a touch as well. Now that my highlights and whites are dealt with, I'll go to my shadows and just boost that up a little bit to reveal some details in the darker areas. And then with the blacks, this is kind of counterintuitive, but I usually bring this down because I find when you bring the blacks up, it starts to wash out your photo versus if you bring up the shadows and then bring down the blacks just a little bit, it helps to create a nice rich contrast in the image, which is the editing style that I like to create. The next thing I do is go to the clarity slider and I just boost this up by a very small amount, like plus five to plus 10. And this just helps to make things look a little more crisp. The next step is I go to my tone curve, which I like to think of as my creative contrast, if you will. I make sure I go to the region curve, which is this icon right here. And that way you have the sliders. It just makes life a little bit easier. From there, I'm gonna adjust my highlights and my shadows to add some more depth to the photo. So let's increase the lights a bit and I'll bring up the darks just a touch. The next thing I do before going into Photoshop is my HSL adjustments. Now you can go through the hue, saturation, and luminance and move the sliders individually, but an easier way that I like to do, it just saves me a ton of time. I click on this little icon here. This allows me to sample a color by clicking on it. So I'll click in the sky and then I can just drag down or up to change the hue of that sampled color, which in this case is the blue slider. So I wanna create a little more of a cyan sky like this. When you're editing portraits, you have to be careful of the skin tones because if I wanted to go and edit the hue of these trees, notice how it also affects the subject's skin tone as well, and that's because they're in the same color range. So when you're editing portraits, it's often best to not touch any of the yellow or orange HSL adjustments, unless you're trying to correct your skin tones that don't look very good. In this case, the skin tones look fine, so I'm not gonna touch that right now. I'm gonna next go to the saturation, once again, clicking on that little sample icon here. I'll go to the sky and just click and drag up to saturate it just a little bit more there. Then since their skin tones look a little bit flat, I'll actually click on their skin tones and just drag up a touch to increase the saturation there. I'll then go to the luminance and I'm gonna brighten their skin tones once again, so clicking and dragging up just a bit that'll lighten up their skin tones a touch, as well as the other yellow hues in the image, or in this case, the orange hues. Now, whenever you're editing a photo, you want to think of where your viewer's attention is going. And for the most part, it's going to the couple here. However, I find that the color of these are a little bit distracting, so I'd like to darken that down here quickly before going into Photoshop. Now, I'm gonna do that by clicking the masking icon, clicking the brush adjustment, and then I'm gonna make sure auto mask is checked. That will allow Lightroom to automatically select that edge that I want to deal with, which is the beams here. So I'm going to go and paint over this and the red highlight will indicate the mask. Now with those beams selected by the red highlight, I'm just going to go to my saturation slider and drag that down to desaturate them so they don't look so yellow and take up my attention, I guess. Then I'm going to go to the exposure and drag that down a touch as well so that my subjects are brighter and then those beams are darker, therefore not drawing much attention to them. Perfect. Clicking done. Now at this point you might be thinking, well the edit's looking pretty good, but there are some things where Photoshop will come in very handy here. And in particular, that is the skin retouching and also this hair here that I'd like to remove from her face. So that type of thing is really hard to do well in Lightroom, but then there's also some other advantages with dodging and burning that'll show you in Photoshop as well. So to access Photoshop from Lightroom, just right click on your photo and go to edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now let's go and touch up our subject's skin using a very simple tool called the spot healing brush tool. You can access that by clicking here in the toolbar and going to the spot healing brush. Now I'm going to create a new layer so that we're not gonna edit our photo directly. And then I'll make sure the type is set to content aware and sample all layers is checked in the options bar. Now from there, I'm going to just go over and zoom in here. And if you have an editing tablet, that's gonna be super helpful for this, but you can still do it with a mouse. I'm just going to go and paint over any areas that I would like to remove from my subject skin, any blemishes and things like that. Now that black highlight you see, or that black line, is simply a indication of what areas are gonna be sampled and removed 
from your subject's skin. So it does this very quickly and it works like magic. And to me, it's a lot better than the spot removal tool in Lightroom. So that's why I opt to use Photoshop for this type of thing. Now I'm gonna continue doing this over my subject's skin until everything is complete. Now that the primary blemishes are gone, let's go and remove this strand of hair. We can still use the exact same tool as before. I'm just going to click and drag over the hair in small chunks because this tool seems to work better when you're only doing small areas at a time. You can resize your brush as you go by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. Now in some cases when using the spot healing brush tool you can end up with these weird textures like this here but to fix that we can use the other version of the healing brush which is the healing brush tool. With this tool you have to manually sample an area that you can then paint over after. So by holding alt or option I can click an area to sample and then with a nice soft brush I can go and just paint over that weird texture and it just gets rid of it for me based on where I set my sample. Now, if you're new to this tool, I have an explainer video sharing everything you need to know about removing objects or retouching skin in Photoshop that I'll leave up in the corner right now if you're interested. Anyways, I'll just do this a few times, sampling a couple different areas to touch up that weird texture until it's all looking natural. So now zooming out, we have done a little bit of skin retouching on a new layer and you can see that the hair is now completely removed from our subject's face. Now that I've retouched the skin and all the distractions are out of the way, I'm going to go through with a final touch of darkening and lightening using two different exposure adjustment layers. I find that this works really well to just draw your attention to your subjects and it's a nice way to just finish off your edit. So I'm gonna start by creating one exposure adjustment layer. I'm gonna make this one darker like so. Now with that layer mask selected, I'll press Command or Control I to invert it so now that none of those exposure adjustments are affecting my photo. Then with my brush tool selected and my foreground color set to white, I'm gonna set my opacity to a somewhat low value and I'll just go and paint over any areas that I'd like to darken in the photo. So I'm gonna go and accentuate any natural shadows because I like that contrast personally. And I'm also gonna just darken around some of the edges as well and along the horizon. Now that we've darkened up just a couple areas to make our subjects pop a little more, I'm going to add another exposure adjustment layer and now increase the exposure this time just a bit. Once again, press Command or Control I with that second exposure layer selected. And now with a lower opacity brush, I'm just gonna go about 20%. I can go and paint over my subject's faces just to lighten those up. I'll paint over some of the brighter areas of her clothing here over his shoulder, maybe even along the highlights in her hair. So now turning those two adjustment layers on and off, you can see the big difference that makes to just make our subjects pop a bit more and our attention is now drawn to the center of our photo. Now to bring this image back into Lightroom, I'll just press Command or Control S to save the document or you can go to File, Save to do that. Now taking a look at that before and after side by side here, you can see the big difference that it makes while still creating a nice natural looking portrait photo. Now for the second image, we're gonna edit this waterfall photo and a lot of the same premises apply except we're going to do some more creative effects when we get over into Photoshop. So as usual I start things off in the exposure adjustments here. I'm going to bring down the highlights a bit to preserve some of the details in the sky but then I'm going to bring up the white so that the waterfall doesn't look too flat in this case. Now as for these shadows I'll bring those up a touch but then bring down the blacks just like I did before because I like to have that contrast I find that this helps to make the image pop. Now being that this is a waterfall photo I kind of like the blue vibe to water Waterfall. So I'm going to go to my color temperature here, my white balance, and just drag that down a bit so it's a little more blue. Then I'll go to my clarity slider and just increase that a touch to make some of those details pop a little more. Next, I go to my tone curve just as before, and I'll do some creative contrast adjustments by adding a little bit of brightness to the waterfall, but then increasing the contrast just by bringing down those darks a touch as well. This is just making our photo look a little more dramatic, which is kind of the look that I'm going for. Next, I'm gonna to go to my hue adjustment and click on the sampling option. I'm gonna click on the moss here, and just drag around to see a color that I like. I kind of wanna go for this more creative edit with a more orangey moss. So let's just drag that down to something like this. That looks pretty cool to me. And then I'll sample the water and see if I can get a bit of a color in there as well. Since this photo is already super colorful, I'm not gonna do anything with the saturation, but I will go to the luminance, click on the sampler once again, click on the waterfall, and just drag up a bit to brighten up that water. And then I'll go to the moss and drag up a little as well to brighten that up too. 
Now our photo is just looking a lot more dramatic than it once did. Now let's take this into Photoshop to do some more effects that I find aren't really as easily done in Lightroom. Now here in Photoshop with landscape images in particular, there's one adjustment layer that I love using called selective color. You can find that in the adjustments panel here, but I'm not just going to use the selective color as is. I like to do something with the layer mask so that it really affects the colors a bit differently. So with that layer mask selected, I'll go up to image and apply image. Then I'm gonna set the layer to my photo, which is the background layer here, and I'll click OK. What that does is applies all the exposure values into a layer mask on my image so that the shadows and the highlights will all be affected differently by these colors. So now I'm gonna start in the blacks here, and now I can add some really fine-tuned effects and colors into the different exposure ranges of my photo, and I find that it does a great job to add creative, dramatic effects to landscapes. Once the blacks are edited, I go to the neutrals and just repeat this process again. And then lastly, I go to the whites. And here I just move around the sliders as needed once again. It's all about experimenting here. Perfect. Turning that on and off, you can see how it does a slight difference, but it really helps to enhance some of the colors in the photo, in my opinion. Now for the next step, I'm going to dodge and burn my photo, but rather than using the exposure adjustment, I'm gonna use the actual dodge and burn tools. First, I'll create a gray layer by pressing Command or Control, Shift and N. Set the mode down here to overlay. Check this box here, click OK. Now I'll go and select my dodge tool and I'll set the exposure to 20 to 30%. Once again, if you have an editing tablet, this will be super helpful, but you don't need one necessarily. Now from there, I'm gonna go and paint over any of the areas of my photo that I would like to be a little bit brighter. I'm gonna go over some areas of the waterfall and some key areas in the moss as well. I will also go over a bit of the sky just to make it kind of glow, if you will. Once your dodge adjustments are done, we need to burn, which is going to darken. So selecting the burn tool here. Once again, an exposure between 10 to 30%. I'm going to paint around all of the edges here that don't have a highlight, such as the water. And I'm going to darken up certain areas in the waterfall to sort of create contrast and paint along any areas that would be naturally shadowed just to bring back some life there. Now turning that on and off, you can see the big difference that makes to draw our attention to the waterfall and make things feel more dramatic. But to take this one step further, I'm going to create an Orton effect layer, which adds a nice glow to certain areas in the photo. This works great on landscape images. So I'm gonna shift click all my layers, press Command or Control, Alt or Option, Shift and E. That will merge and duplicate all of your layers onto a new layer. Then I'll go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur and I'll just increase the blur radius to a point where I can still see some details, but it is quite blurry. So this looks good to me here. I'll then create a curves adjustment layer and just add a point in the highlights and then add another point in the shadows and drag down to add a ton of contrast. Then I'll click on this clipping mask icon so this layer only affects my Orton effect layer. Going back to my image layer, I'm going to set this from normal down here to screen. And now I'm going to add a layer mask and press Command or Control I so that entire layer becomes transparent and now we can selectively paint where we want this effect to be applied. So grabbing my brush tool, setting my foreground color to white, I'm gonna have a lower opacity, maybe like 30% here, and I'm gonna to begin to paint over certain areas of the photo that I would like to have that glowing effect. This works really well on the highlights, so I'm gonna paint over most of the waterfall and some of the leaves here as well. Now with that complete, turning that on and off, you can see how it just adds a cool glow effect to our photo, and now we can save it back into Lightroom since I'm done here in Photoshop. We can do that by pressing Command or Control S or going to File, Save. Here we have our before and then our after. We've done a ton of creative edits to make this photo feel a lot more dramatic and epic than it once did before. Now, of course, this might not be your exact taste in editing, but this is something that I really enjoy doing. But some of these techniques that you just learned, you can apply no matter what type of editing style you prefer. And with that, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.